breakfast at the park. So, any of you guys that want to take off first, just introduce before yourself. You, before you start, I want to tell everybody what they miss. What they miss? If you didn't get down to the Lions oh. Park. Oh, yes. During the uh, harvest days, you missed out on one of the best. Don't oh, make donuts <laughs> in the world. They were they so were good. wonderful. They were hot. They were fresh. <laughs> we sat there and waited for them. <laughs> and they were delicious. The, the Lions Cup girls. Made uh, oh. but the, I think uh, Lou, Lou Miller and, and uh, her group made them in. Oh man, they were Jan. Really very good. And I was they were out of wonderful. Town. They and were. then they had a sandwich, and I can't think, and I wasn't going to forget the name of it. And I don't remember for sure. But it was on homemade bread, and it was sliced turkey, fresh spinach, and a cranberry relish that you put on. Oh, man. So next year, well, I think they had I think Christmas year, last year, I'm too. I'm going to sit donuts. down there next year and just wait. <laughs> For the donuts again. Well, if they have the Christmas, I'll be there. Christmas. <laughs> I think they had them at the Christmas walk. Somebody said. Oh well, they so, were wonderful. Oh, yeah. they so were next good. year, plan on going so you don't miss out on them. Yeah, and I think the Heritage Days was bigger this year. Yes, it was than wonderful. Last year, yeah, more things. Okay, so. okay, right. whichever one of you guys want to go first, just pop in and say your name and. Go ahead. No, Start talking. Go ahead. I'm, I'm long okay, long. okay. Let's have an arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Deputy Jeff McCarty with the St. Genevieve County Sheriff's Office, and I spearhead the Chop of the Cop program every year uh, to help less fortunate kids in our county. Uh, this year, the event will be held on December 7th. Uh, it's on a Sunday morning. Uh, this event is not a sign-up event. Uh, we are. I mean, names have been submitted to me from the schools and from local organizations, the people they feel that can benefit from our program. What we do is we team up uh, a child with an officer or a community leader because if it wasn't for the community, this wouldn't happen because you guys support us and very much so. Uh, we're in our sixth year and when I started here, they said, you don't have a name, St. Genevieve name, you'll never get anything from these people. Well, they can't say that. It took me a little while, but this community is great. And they realize that we're trying to help kids and they come out in droves. So we, we, we team up a child with a community leader or a police officer and they're allowed to shop. We're gonna have the dollar store and we're planning on having the Dollar Tree this year and the Alco. And depending on the funds we raise, the kids are given a predetermined amount of money and they can go down they shop we urge that the parents don't go with them so the kids be able to buy what they want within reason we strongly urge that they buy at least one clothing item uh, and our escorts look as well you'll see if they need a pair of shoes or socks or pants or coat and we urge them to do that and then they can buy toys uh, there is a limit on we don't allow them to buy any kind of weapons or knives or phones or cell, uh, phone cards or web cameras. Uh, no videos above their age, no games above their age. Other than that, it's pretty well free reign. And we have given no less than $50 a kid. Last year, we had $75. Uh, this county was very generous. So these kids, most of them, have not a clue how far $50 will go. And the smiles on their faces, when they get started, they think, what am I doing? I'm going off with this stranger. They really don't know what's going to happen if it's their first time. But as soon as they get down, they realize, man, they're not telling me no. I can get this, and I can get that. <laughs> and, and it warms your heart. You see these kids? And I'd say about 75% of them says, can I buy my little brother something? Or can I buy so-and-so something? So they're not all thinking of themselves. They are right. thinking of other people. Well, that first year, it's open from kindergarten to the fifth grade. I wish we could do every child in school. Unfortunately, we can't. When they come down to shop, they were bringing their little brothers and sisters down, and they were sitting there crying because we didn't have anything for them. That wasn't going to happen again. So I started a toy drive. 
and it exploded. Last year we had 700 toys. <laughs> <laughs> but now, if I don't have the money to take them shopping, then they get toys. It's not one toy. Usually it's a whole bag of toys. And then the kids that don't get to go shopping, like the little brothers and sisters, they get toys too. So everybody benefits from this. And even the officers and the community leaders, they have fun too. You know, they turn into be a kid at the same time. They're shopping. And everything, if they buy clothing, it all has to be tried on. That way nothing can be taken back. And all the toys are marked, so nothing can be taken back. Um, cash donations, if anybody wants to donate, they can contact me or send it to the sheriff's office. Uh, I'd like to have all the cash donations in by December 1st. That way I have that week to the more money we have, the more kids I can take shopping. Uh, the toy drive that we're having, it's going to be extended to December 15th. So after I get the to uh, shop of the cop all done and over with, then I've got a couple weeks to get the toys distributed out to the kids that get the toys. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of people, when they donate the toys, they think kids only go up to age eight. So from eight to 12, I don't get a lot of stuff for them. So when I start separating toys, I don't have anything. So if we get enough monetary donations, the money that I don't use in the shop of the cop, then I'll go out and buy age specific stuff. It might be a $5 watch, you know, something that the teenagers would want versus, mm -hmm. you know, uh, G.I. Joe or a Barbie, you know, or something like that. So uh, we try to do that. So that way we can hit every age bracket. Um, another thing that's happening, not happening this year is the Adopt-A-Family program. Uh, a few years ago, East Missouri Action Agency had that program. And if they were adopted, then I took them off my list. That way we had spread out as much as we can help as many people as we can. East Missouri lost their uh, financing or funding and it was about the same time of year so some young ladies from the school and from the health department said let's try to keep this going so they helped a few people that year and the next two years they helped a lot of people uh, unfortunately something has happened and it's not going to happen this year so I've got all the load and so I'm going to help as many as I can but I'm asking for help that if anybody normally adopted a family and would like to help us and, you know, to keep helping and to help us, I'd very much appreciate it. You can either do it at toys or cash contribution. Uh, if you want to donate food, I've got local food banks and local churches that I get it to. Uh, we have children that says, I want to have a nice Christmas dinner for my family. And we may try to get them to Christmas dinners. Uh, we've had people in the past that uh, one organization buys new coats and donates them. Uh, that was done through Adopt a Family Program. But if that organization wants to do that again, call me. I'll come get them, and I'll make sure they're giving out to people that need them. Uh, we're not going to turn anything down. Um, if you need something picked up or you need help with something, all you need is call the sheriff's office and ask for me, and I'll be glad to help you. Uh, the toy drive, they can drop off the toys at the sheriff's office. Uh, Wokes Insurance is a drop-off site. Alco in the dollar store has boxes down there at a drop-off site. Uh, Bloomsdale Bank, the main bank here in town, and the Country Mart has a barrel. And if you need toys picked up, like I said, just call me. I'll come and get them. Uh, if, you, if you're willing to donate, I'm willing to come and get them. That's not a problem at all. Um, I guess that's it. They can contact me at the sheriff's office. The number is 883-982. Wrong number. 883. <laughs> I don't even call the sheriff's office. And <laughs> just to go call the sheriff's call the office. Sheriff's office. <laughs> but I also have an email address, and you can email me. It's my name, J. McCarty, M-C-C-A-R-T-Y, at sgcso.com. And that's the initials for the Sheriff's Office, St. Timothy County Sheriff's Office. And thank you very much in advance for helping us out.
Now, well, Jeff, I have a question. How many children did you help last year? Did, right around 300. 300? Wow. Yeah. This is our sixth year. We've helped approximately 1,800 kids in the last six years. Well, that's really something when you think uh, just a small town like this yes. guy, right. that yes. there's that many needy kids. Right. So. Yes. And, you know, we say needy. Um, I say less fortunate. Welcome to What's New. Yeah, this is Pat. Well, hi, Pat. Pat. Yeah, hi, uh, who do we make the check out to if we want to get sheriff's to office. Just, uh, shop for the cop? Shop for the cop or sheriff's office? At the sheriff's, the sheriff's office. Make it out to the sheriff's office and mail it to the sheriff's office. And, and then the memo, write shop for the cop on it, or SWAC. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, you Pat. welcome, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Yeah. But uh, sure, sweet. I've had people, you know, this time of year, we know it's got cold. We see that, you know, it's 80 degrees one week and it's 30 degrees the next. Right. So this time of year, you know, the family, they might have a single parent or they might have both parents working. And they make it all year long, no problem. They're just getting by. They're not asking for help. They're, they're just living day to day. Then this time of the year, I guarantee you there'll be some cars that won't start in the morning because their battery had died because of the cold snap. So there's a hundred dollars. Now they got to turn on the heat, so then, and or they went and bought propane to get ready for this. So there's, there's four or five hundred dollars, and their taxes are due next month. So there's another thing. And, you and now you got price. Christmas. You got winter time, yep. and now you got Christmas, and all this piles up on you. And I had a, a gentleman tell me, so I didn't sign up for this program, and I'm not needing it. And I explained to him. We're just trying to get you over the hump. If I can help you with Christmas, then you can do your normal bills. And that way you don't get behind because if you overextend yourself at Christmas time, it takes all year to try to catch back up. And then Christmas is there again, and you never mm -hmm. get caught back up. So the only thing we're trying to do, we're not saying that you're needy. We're not saying that, that you're trying to book the system. We just want to try to get you over the hump. And that's all we, that's all we want to do. That's great. Yeah. It's a wonderful program. And like Jeff I said, Polico, you said that um, the the ones want their brothers and sisters or whatever. When you pick that family, are they are the schools give you their names or whatever? Do they only give you the? Or I'm looking at it like, say one teacher, I have this child in my class. They don't think about. I mean, I don't mean think. They they're just thinking of that one, and they are not the brother and sisters. I fun? have asked this kid. I have asked the teachers and the people who give me the list if they know they got siblings. Put that on the list also. Okay. Uh, if it might say first grader and two siblings, then I may call that number and find out how old they are of her boys and girls. I see. But I have asked. I, I might. I, I've asked them to do that. You know, sometimes they don't, but I've asked them to do that. That way we know when they come down there, because I'll bring a big box of toys with me right. with the expectation of knowing that they're going to come in with okay. so. so if they yeah. want to donate, all they have to do is get a hold of the sheriff's office. Yep, and ask for me, and if I'm not there, leave a message, and I'll get back with you. And that's a great program that you started up there. But, you know, I a can't, lot of work, and it's I can't, uh, very beneficial. Say enough that... And you know, it's the community. Clean. It's yeah, good. it's, it's good work. work. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It is. You know, people. You know, they. Said, I don't know how you do it. And I said, you know, it is. It, to me, it's not work. It's fun work. Mm -hmm. You know, because seeing it's the like building kids. a house. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of work. When you start just a foundation, you don't see much there. But when you put the windows in it and the door on it, you see it's a house. And that's the way I feel. And right now, I've just got some names. But come December seventh, when those kids come in there. You got some smiles. Then I see the smiles. Mm -hmm. And we are used to, we do everything right down in the plaza. Well, now Dollar Store is out to the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we do have a transportation arranged that we will get them up to the Dollar Store and shop and bring them back. So that's all taken care of if everything works as planned. Well, you still do great. it in the Rosier? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, we'll be at the Country Mart there. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank That's you for having me. Very nice. Thanks. Yeah. It's okay, okay it's now great. which one of you want to do next? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas in the park. <laughs> 
Yeah, we got. Is that what you're calling it? Fair, Fair Christmas. Christmas. Fair, Fair Christmas. Christmas. Fair. Second oh. annual. Okay, second annual Fair Christmas. Yeah. Every time we every time we pick a date, and we think that we went through and made sure that nobody else has something, now we just found out something else on, was on that date. What date did you pick? The date, the seventh. That's, yeah, that's would... during the daytime. Well, yours is so too. <laughs> How, how long does yours last? We bring the kids in every hour, so like 25 to 30 kids an hour we have. So normally we're done by noon. Oh, okay. Uh, eight to noon, but I've got the room slated to two o'clock. So oh, okay. It won't, it won't last out past Okay. Well, well, ours starts at noon. And ours starts at noon. Yeah. And then we had the Christmas walk on Sunday. Yeah, our right. Christmas walk's in too. Yeah, but yours is on Saturday. Ours is on Sunday. Okay. Yes. The the Christmas walk is still going on, but that's not. Yeah, it's not the main part of it, right? right. Saturday is the main part, right? Jeff, right. didn't they used to do the shop with the cop on Saturday? Yes, and I read well, the same the, problem they did because the sixth <laughs> is a Christmas parade, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And the thirteenth is a Santa Bash at the community community right. center. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. that left the twentieth, which the store shelves would be empty, and that's five days before Christmas. And right. if we have a bad weather, we're done. Right. So I went through, and I, and I didn't know about third date. So I, well, I'll do the seventh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I know. <laughs> no, it's you know. But that'll work out. It'll work. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. yeah. You can yeah. send them up yeah. to the park. Right. Yeah. Send them up to the park. Okay. Uh, well, we want to. We got donations, you know, from different businesses that help us do this. I mean, the fair board don't have this kind of money to get the gifts for the kids and stuff. So, if we got them, I, I, I like to list the, the businesses that we got donated, gave donations this year. It's uh, Clint Wolf with St. Gen Eye Care, Oaks Furniture, Deb Says So, Farmers Mutual, Lloyd Ag, St. Gen Herald, La Hoist, Citizens Electric, St. Gen Hospital, St. Gen Ford, William Noby, Midwest Marketing. St. Gen Veterinary Clinic, Robert and Holskamp, Cafe St. Genevieve, Bank of Bloomsdale, Wilkes Insurance, Vern Bowman Contracting, Barley, Automotive, Waymire Printing, Shoes and Sons, Owls Auto Body, County Do It Center, Rally Formals, and Lurk Custom Cabinets. I mean, this is just a few that we got so far. I mean, this helps us get the gifts for the kids. Right. And uh, this. We're, we're in the midst of trying to get another petting zoo up there. Um, we had Critter Lane last year, and they ended up ditching the truck, and they had to put up the pony down. So they're not they're not traveling no more with their animals. So yeah. where was that one you talked? Mar Marble Hill. No, Oak Ridge. Down in Oak Ridge, we got a gentleman that's got all kinds of animals that we're trying to work to get them to come up to the fairgrounds this year, where the kids mm -hmm. can have a petting zoo and stuff. So. Of course, Santa's going to be up there. Wonderful Santa, and they'll take them pictures with Santa. And then St. Jen's, St. Jen and Valley's um, NHS. NHS, they did. They were amazing last year. They did, they did the games. They did. They brought food for bake sales. Um, uh, they helped with Santa taking the oh, pictures, yeah. and there were like little elves with helping That's with the kids with Santa. Yeah, yeah. Like Santa and they uh, decorated. Yeah, they and helped, helped decorate, tear and down, tear down. They were amazing. They they're exciting. So we, we're going to get those guys back again this year to help us. Last year was probably, I think we were so excited, and it would even well everybody knows what last. I don't think you're going to forget what last year was like. Well, we had bad time. weather at the same yes. time. It was very bad. bad. Yeah. But very bad. How many kids seen Santa? I think we took a hundred pictures with Santa. So that's not probably we've probably seen more kids than that because not everybody got a picture with him. Right. Um, every kid that comes to see and sit on Santa's lap will get a wrapped present from Santa that they get to open up there. And that's all free. Um, if they want to get pictures taken, they can get pictures taken with Santa. We'll have um, games there that they can play. We'll have little crafts that they can do. We'll have a bake sale. Also, um, like Mike said, we're working on the petting zoo. And then we'll also have like a little concession stand area where you can get your fair food again. Fair Christmas food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll have Frito pies and hot dogs and yeah. cheeseburgers and hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. And possibly 
kettle corn? I don't we will have kettle corn. Christmas <laughs> <laughs> kettle, kettle corn. Last year it was very good, the kettle corn. Did you corn. see that Christmas yeah. kettle corn? Yeah, Santa kettle. drops them off at your porch, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, it's just exciting. My, you know, we wanted to do something. We, you know, we're trying to do something more often for the community. That's what we're all, I mean, that's what we're all about is our, the community. And so, you know, here comes the fair and we're thinking all these, I mean, but it takes us a year to put on the fair, but we're thinking, you know what, what else can we do? Well, we even, because it was close to things, uh, Halloween. Halloween last year. I said, why don't we have a, how, this building we could do a haunted house or something like yeah. that. Well, really exciting but then it was like oh we're gonna have to do all that within a couple of weeks <laughs> so we thought but what about christmas i mean everything it, it was perfect we had lou miller and she brought her carry yeah. oh but the end ride the last ride was us we took we got the last ride and it was kind of i don't think she went she didn't want to go with it in dark but you know how early it gets dark well we were going and and it just kind we got up by the or in the park and the lights were shining and here come this like uh, icy mist. Oh my gosh, it was wonderful. I mean, it was cold and wonderful. It was just what you wanted. But, oh, yeah. you know, it was to make the whole Christmas thing exciting, I think that was a, a Are you going to have vendors this year? Probably. <laughs> last year, oh my gosh. Tell them about last year, Mike. Oh, that guy, I mean. Yeah, we, Bowman? we had, uh, yeah, Larry Bowman. The wood furnace outside wood yeah. furnaces and from Bloomsdale, he set one up outside of the barn, and we wrapped the fifty, the building, the 50 yeah. by one fifty building with house wrap. We sealed it all off and stuff, and he pumped heat in with heat exchangers through that wood stove. I mean, it did good till the wind started in the afternoon. And the wind was off. And then the, the house wrap started coming loose, and then we had vendors getting upset that it was so cold, and we were putting ashes in barrels and propane heaters and stuff. It. It, it was neat. I mean, it's it's you don't know it's that time of year. That's you just right. can't jack. It could be, right. like it's you said, it's 80 right. degrees right. or it could be 30 degrees. Right. But I and they're calling for bad weather again. We talked about having some, a few vendors, you know, in the building with us. But I mean, it gets going to get crowded if we get too much in there. So I like to do that. I just wish the youth building was bigger. You know where we can handle more even during the fair it would come in handy you could put vendors in there for air conditioning because mm -hmm. i mean but this year we lost the candle there's a vendor going to come oh, sell sorry. candles and it was too hot right. for her to set them out so right. Right. i mean i think the fair could get bigger if we had more more area but uh, it, it, it all comes with an expense so you're just so. going to do away with the vendors this year as of now, yeah. As of now. Okay. Right. if we see that we're going to have room or we see that it's um, if we have a heat wave yeah <laughs> <laughs> well you never know yeah. that's right yeah. it's been well long last year Valley, or the kids at Valley did the uh, live nativity yeah and they that did was real, the live nativity oh yeah and that was really neat but you know and it was a perfect place to have it it was outside and it was cold and it was you know, but, you know, it gets better with the, you, you know, first year, it was just horrible weather. That's all there was to it. Second year, I, you know, it's going to be inside, so it should be pretty good. <laughs> well, you start but, someplace, and you can always add to it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like our, you know, we started out with 50 kids and $2,500, and now we're doing <laughs> a bunch. So it, <laughs> But right. You, if you show, and that, that's what I say about this community, if you show once you get something started, you're serious about it, it'll grow. Right. And, right. And, and so if you have a bad year one year. Right. You know, it, that's just part it's of just life. part of it. Yeah. Well, that, that day, that day, <laughs> that morning, how many, how long, we were all on the phone, I think. Yeah. Yeah, texting and calling. Text. Well, you know, that yes morning, or no, we're going to yes, have yes, it. Yes or no. Yes or no. That morning we had said, or, Prior to that, we had said that if the Christmas Walk cancels their parade for the second time, that we were going to cancel ours. Well, they canceled the parade, so we're like, we're canceling it. No, we're not. Yes, we are. No, we're not. Well, I, remember, I asked Martha yes or no, and she goes, well, whatever you think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, 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 yeah. That's always the easy way out. 
I, I'm right here, you know. I'm right we, here. we were up there setting up, and, you know, Larry was building the stove or getting the heat going, and I was getting the kettle car started, and a guy come up and rolled his window down. He had his wife and his kids in the back seat. He goes, tell me Santa's going to be here. Oh. I said, Santa's here. <laughs> you know, and it, it, just, it, it just all fell in place. I mean, you know, we had so many kids last year, and I'm, I'm hoping we get that many, if not you know, more or double of it. I think Santa's Santa. a big draw. Santa. And I'll promote and I get done if you with can, little, yeah, I'll let say, me know hey, that. Go down the road. You're here in town. If go you're up here, go up this. Uh, Santa's going to be up there. Get some fires. Get some fires. I'll put them on the table. Oh, oh I, I, I okay, guess we'll do that. that. You brought some kettle corn here that. Oh, then, yeah. We we made Christmas corn, they call it. It was oh, food color. I love that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice. You know, that's now, is it just going to be Saturday or, or birthday? No, it's only going to be Sunday. Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Yeah, it's not going to be Saturday. No, so it's going to be that's, Sunday. That's the Christmas walk. Okay. You know, when it comes to Christmas, you need six Saturdays just for Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take it away. You know, and well, this, that's year, true. this year, Thanksgiving yeah. is the end of November. So mm -hmm. there, you don't really have very many weeks. No. Nope. So. In, in colonial times, Christmas went from the Feast of St. Nicholas all right. the way through till after the Epiphany. Right, mm -hmm. right. And if you look at your calendar, guys, December 7th, is just a couple, three weeks away. Yeah. So, oh, I know. <laughs> so you know, those of you who want to help or whatever, you know, you think about that, it's right away. Yes. It's not a month away. Yes. But anyway, yeah, the holidays so. are here too fast. Yes. It's crazy. We would, so know. it's just Sunday from what time to what? 12 to 6. 12 to 6 on Sundays? Okay. That is dark. It That's will. what I was going to say. It's really dark at 6. Yeah. Well, it'll all be inside. But there's so, lights. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll turn all the outside lights on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Light and last on. year, really by probably like 5, it was pretty much over. But I mean, if we still got people coming in, we'll, you know, Sandy yeah. will be there till 6. And yeah, yeah, we'll be there till 6. So. Mm -hmm. Um, Santa will be there. Have cookies with him and drinks. Yeah. Um, okay, oh, so. Wait a minute. We forgot to mention. Cafe St. Genevieve, Mike, was she on there? Yes. Okay. She's donating cookies. So oh, yeah. All the kids will get a cookie also. Who's so. doing this? Cafe St. Genevieve or Cafe oh, Genevieve. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So yeah. she's going to be donating homemade cookies for it. So. And Santa, this real Santa, I'm telling you, all kids want to sit on his lap. That's how good he is. <laughs> had his reindeer, seriously, had his reindeer up there. Really? Right. I mean, I'm telling you, he's a real deer, too. <laughs> real reindeer. <laughs> Just gallop them away. <laughs> I know there's deer up in the park. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. We got a video of them. We were up there. Several of them. Yes. Like a, it was like a mom and a sister and kids. Well, yeah, there are two other ones. Three other ones. There's the twin. twins. There's yes. twins. There's yes. twins. And then there's, there's another one that's the same one. age. There's yes. three of them. So there's three little ones. Oh, I've never seen any of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're getting pretty big now. Small before the fair and stuff. Yeah, they're just laying out in the field. Yeah. You know, I just mow around them and. Go mow somewhere else and look back, and they finally move, and I'd go mow. Yeah, you could stop your car and just sit and look at them, and they'd just look at you, and then they'd eat, and then they'd Hopefully look they'd at you, and the then they'd eat. Week yeah. and a half. <laughs> They're so cute. Yeah, somebody's going to go up there and wet them one. Oh, no. hey, They're hiding now. Can though. we tell you a little bit? Can we tell them a little bit about our fair this year? Just a little bit? About what? The fair? We're well, sure. Mike, tell them about it. On just so we, just so well, we don't feel a past eight thirty. But we won't yeah. do it. That's going to right. have something new. We got a new person that took over the demo derby. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. See, I know the stuff. I don't know the detail. <clears throat> uh, Scott Beckerman's running the yes. the demo derby for us this year, and they're going to have. Hot Wheels, the little battery operated cars and trucks. They're going to have a demolition derby for the little kids. So they're going to oh. have these Hot Wheels running around. They, it's going to be on Saturday night, but they're going to do a little preview like Thursday and Friday night to give people an idea of what's going to go on. Oh, how oh, that'll but, be uh, neat. Those kids are really like Hot Wheels. Sorry, it's Fire Wheels. Yeah. 
Cora told me. <laughs> yeah, it's, we got a lot of new things, you know, Scott bringing, you know, fresh ideas and stuff to, That's get, great. to get the Demo Derby big. He's he's concerned about time. He's already talking what was like four hours or better as the cars are ready that he's got. I think he wants to start at six. Coming. Yeah, he might even start the demo early because it's going to last so long. So, uh, Which is they, exciting. Yeah, they up the, the prize money and he's getting a lot of donations from businesses for the Mad Dog and different different events and you know so yeah, and there's good. there's things i i'm not i wish no. he was here but yeah. yeah there's things that if you there's if you get like the mad dog award you go straight into the feature you oh, know, or okay. say, there's different ways of getting mm -hmm. to the feature without winning your heat so because people can save their cars you know they don't have to run them to try to get to the end of the heat they can just you know get this prize or whatever and straight to the feature so Scott's been working on cars since he's been a little kid yeah <laughs> about mm, three years old <laughs> you probably weren't probably so. nothing. you probably didn't hear him up at your no, I never story. heard a thing <laughs> never so the, it, it sounds like the fairs is really up there at the park you're really developing a lot of stuff for this coming year we are yeah it's and that's great yeah it, it, it's a lot of work I mean we're going to go straight from oh, the yeah. Christmas fair Christmas and then it'll be getting the ads out for the fair book right um, beginning of january so the fair is four days out of a out of the year but it takes a year to get you know right. a lot so, of work i don't think time. People, people realize how much effort it takes to put on one of these big events they don't oh. and they always can use volunteer more volunteers oh yes, uh, oh, yes. Yeah, it's easy to get less, burned out on less them. criticism <laughs> and more help yeah. 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 you know how to take care of criticism Please tell us. Just say when anybody starts complaining that you should have done it this way or you should have done it that way, all you have to do is say, Oh, really? That's the way you would do it? Have you ever volunteered for anything <laughs> like that before? Well, I'll put your name down for next year and you can buy it either shut them up or they get involved. Get involved. Yeah. And we're gonna have that. Yeah, we could. Well, it's every group or organization that runs off of volunteers. Everybody needs oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I really think the town or the community would be better if everybody would volunteer and just see what it takes. It takes you to know. do things, right? Just a, so. just a few just, hours. Just, just here, one year. Mm -hmm. One year, volunteer for something. Or take your turn being a president or a vice president, treasurer. So just work. one year. That's all it takes. Just one year. Well, I think the fact you get kids involved too, and that helps them learn a lifelong oh, ability of, of giving back to the community, and we had that's the so important. Valley Stuco pick up trash. They volunteered to pick up trash for service hours. Um, two mornings, I guess it was Saturday morning and Sunday morning, or Sunday, 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 and, Sunday and Monday, Monday morning. Monday. So they did it for um, service hours for <coughs> student council. And I said, every kid should have to pick up trash. Oh, then yes. maybe they would respect it and not throw it on the ground whenever they're yep. done. Exactly. So, yeah. But I think getting the youth involved is something. Well, it sounds like it's going to be good. Yes. Okay. And I when people start volunteering, then it makes others volunteer also. Yes. Or it helps yes. to encourage others to volunteer. During the summer, it's kind of hard to get students to volunteer because they don't have to do it right. during the summer. <laughs> yeah. During the school year it's a little bit easier because, you know, they have to do those service hours. Yeah. Um, but the summertime is a little bit harder. Well, you have to talk to the school system and ask them if they can't count them toward yeah. service hours in the wintertime. Right. I think they do. I know Valley counts. Yeah. Do they? Yeah. yeah. The summer also? Yeah. Do they really? Yeah. Yeah, and that's what like the student council. Yeah, that all counted for mm -hmm. service hours for them. Oh, yeah, well, they can good. do stuff during the summer, and it counts towards it. Oh, well, that's good. But I'm not sure how many programs at St. Jen require service hours. I know NHS does. Other than that, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. You know, there's some kids that do service hours at the nutrition center because yeah. we had three of them there a day. I don't know what school they were from, but there was three of them out there. Yeah. Okay, we can move on to what's 
happened then? What happened then? Yeah, everybody's what talking about then? what's coming up. Just a little past stuff. We're talking about Santa coming to town. In 1948, he came by helicopter and landed on the town square. In 1948? In 1948, which oh, is kind of amazing. It wasn't you, was it? <laughs> and since you all were talking about how it's dark now and this daylight savings time, well, April 1st, 1946, the, the Board of Aldermen passed daylight savings time. Forty days later, on May the 11th, they canceled it. <laughs> it didn't last long. You know, I wanted to get up that early. <laughs> okay, that was a screw up. Well, We've been kind of engrossed with the national election for the last year, but most importantly, the last few months, we've heard a lot about the senatorial and the oh. House of Representatives things. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about once St. Genevievians were pretty big on the national scene, and I wanted to kind of acquaint you with some St. Genevieve residents, people that either lived here or born here, that ended up being U.S. representatives or U.S. senators. And. Uh, I've just got a few pictures. So I was trying to get figure out with Don how to get them on the um, on the television, but couldn't quite do it. But start off with a guy named John Scott. He was really our first permanent lawyer. Back when the French were here, they didn't have lawyers. They used notaries and, and clerks. Oh, here, Jeff, we can share. And uh, in fact, Delasus, the Delasus house, he once said that this is a blessed place. There's no chicanery or lawyers. <laughs> no chicanery or lawyers. Well, when the Americans came to town, obviously we had courts and things like that. John Scott was not our first uh, lawyer. He was our, our second one, but he was the first permanent one. Uh, he was born in Virginia, educated at Princeton, and he came here in 1805, and he was really Missouri's, when we were the territory of Missouri, he was our first delegate to, to Congress. He couldn't vote at that time. Uh, take that back, he was not the first one. Edward Hempstead was the first one, but he was the delegate from 1817 to 1821. And then when we became a state in 1821, he is our first U.S. representative from the state of Missouri. And uh, I don't know if you know it or not, but he's buried up in our cemetery here, and um, as is his two wives. Um, but he uh, served on the Committee for Public Lands, which was really important to the people here in St. Genevieve because we had all those Spanish and French land grants. Well, in, eight, in 1826, he committed a political error. He didn't get caught out in the fountain in front of the Capitol with some dancing girl. What happened was in the election that year for president, there was John Quincy Adams versus uh, Andrew Jackson, and Missouri voted for Andrew Jackson. Well, when uh, Scott cast the uh, electoral vote, he voted for John Quincy Adams. And it irritated everybody in Missouri, so he didn't get reelected. <laughs> but he was the kind of lawyer that everybody should have. One time there was a, a case he had, he was defending this guy who was obviously guilty. The jury goes out, they come back, and they say, not guilty. And the judge is kind of taken back. And he said, how could you declare him not guilty. And he said, John Scott told us to bring in that verdict, so that's what we did. <laughs> in 1855, the, the city alderman banned the La Guillaume, the La Guillaume, because of the partying was a little too hardy. And so they said you couldn't do it anymore. Well, the next year the boys are out again partying, and they all get arrested. And Scott uh, defended them. He got an acquittal, and they all went to the tavern drinking afterwards. <laughs> the last story on John Scott, uh, he, he cursed a lot. He would carry knives and guns into the courtroom. Uh, but right before he died, somebody asked him if he was going to seek religion. And he said, I've served the devil my whole life, and I'm not about to give him up now. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> The next guy was Henry yeah, Dodge, so. and Henry Dodge's father, Israel Dodge, was the first sheriff as when we were the territory of Missouri. Uh, Henry was the deputy sheriff and eventually became the second sheriff of our, our it was a district then, but eventually became the county. Um, he was very, he was a major general in the War of 1812, uh, served in the Wisconsin Territory Militia during the Black Hawk War of 1832. 
And one of the interesting things that he did uh, in 1833, he uh, served in uh, the United States Regiment of the Dragoons, and uh, that was the first mounted cavalry for the United States Army. He had a couple of, three interesting people in that group. One was Daniel Boone's uh, youngest son, Nathan. Another one was a guy named Jefferson Davis. Everybody know who Jefferson Davis mm -hmm. was? And another guy named George Wallace Jones, who I'm going to talk about later. Well, after that, he became the first territorial governor of, of Wisconsin and served as a, a, a delegate at large to the, to the Congress. And he was elected as the first, one of the first two U.S. senators from Wisconsin and, and served for nine years. Well, way back in 1806, there was something called the Burr Conspiracy. Uh, Aaron Burr, who had run for president, he was going to go down to Mexico, take a big chunk of it, and start a new country. Well, he enlisted Henry Dodge and a guy named John Smith T, who's notorious for killing 21 people here, uh, to go off and join this. Well, the president declared it a treasonous act. So by the time they got to New Madrid, they heard about this, so they come back and a grand jury indicted him for treason. And supposedly Dodge took off his coat and whipped nine of the jurors, and it would have ripped, whipped the rest, but they all ran off. That was the end of that. <laughs> Frontier uh, justice was a little different. Yes, quite. <laughs> uh, the next guy is, is one of my most favorite characters, is St. James Lewis Fields Lynn. Uh, he was born in Kentucky. He was a half-brother to Henry Dodge. We all know about how the Valley family kind of ruled colonial St. Genevieve. Mm -hmm. Well, after the Americans came to town, it was the the Dodge, Lynn, all these people are kind of interrelated. And uh, he was the brother-in-law to John MacArthur, you know, that Wrighty Hoffman house down there by the Presbyterian Church that the Hoffmans have redone. That's the MacArthur house. MacArthur was involved in a duel uh, with, uh, or actually it was a street fight with Augusta de Mun, and Louis Lynn was kind of along with him, a future U.S. Senator. Um, <laughs> But he also served as a Missouri senator and a land commissioner. And then in 1833, our U.S. senator died of cholera. That was a disease very that was just coming on in America. We had a couple of big epidemics uh, here in St. Genevieve. And so he was selected by the governor to fill that spot. And he served until 19, 1843 when he died of, we believe, an aneurysm here in town just down the street. He's known as Missouri's model senator. Uh, everybody liked him. He was a gentleman. Uh, one time one of the guys in Congress says if, this, if he proposed some bills and the guy said, well, he proposed them, we might as well accept them. I don't think that had happened today. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. He was also known as the father of Oregon because he would really push to get Oregon into the United States and was known as Iowa senator because he did a lot of work for them. But most importantly, he was known as the handsomest man in Missouri of his time. And John Orham always plays him during our spirit reunion. He wouldn't let anybody else play him. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. But the other thing about Lewis Lynn is he's been buried three times. He was buried in 1843 in the Memorial Cemetery. They stopped burying people there in 1880 and let the cemetery be overgrown. And in 1906, the state who had built that big monument to him up there said, you got to move him. So they moved him out to the new cemetery, he and his wife. And then about 1936, after the bicentennial, they decided to move him back. <laughs> and so uh, they uh, yeah, brought him back. Okay. He had a, a steel coffin and a plate came loose. And there was a glass there. And you could see inside the coffin. And he was mummified mm. almost 100 years later. And, they let the kids out of school. Art Papen said the priest came up and smoked them with incense, even though Lynn was a Methodist. But it was, it's one of our great stories. <laughs> so that's Lewis Lynn. And his house is right down, down the street here. Dick Reminger just bought it about a year yes. ago. So. That was the... That was the Whiffler house. Whiffler's, yeah. Whiffler's yeah, but who lived there? All them kids. Whiffler's. Yeah, it was Whiffler's, Whiffler's yeah. yeah. Well, the next guy is so back. I have a question. Yeah. So if Lynn was mummified, how does that happen? Well, the, the, he had an iron it casket. Was sealed, it was sealed. Sealed. Real tight. Yeah. They said he still, you could see his clothes, his beard, his skin. Oh, my word. Somebody, really? I was trying to find people that actually saw. I mean, there were people still alive that were there. But some lady from Chicago wrote me and said, I didn't get to go, but my brother did. 
And when he came home, Mom had made chocolate pudding, and he wanted my pudding, so he said, Dr. Wynn looked just like your pudding. <laughs> 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 oh, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> well, the, okay. next, the next guy is a, a guy named Augustus Caesar Dodge. He was the son of Henry Dodge. And um, he was actually ed educated in a school down at River of Oz, got run by a Swiss guy named Joseph Hurdick. You know, the Dr. Hurdick house. Dr. Yeah. Hurdick is Joseph Hurdick's son. And that school was called the Asylum. The asylum? <laughs> the asylum. And actually, there were three U.S. senators from St. Genevieve that went to the asylum. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I think there's a few that still do, but. <laughs> Probably not. Well, yeah. I think there should be a bunch of them in yeah. there. <laughs> well, I wonder why they called it the asylum. It was, uh, he taught in a style, a Swiss, there was a Swiss guy named uh, Pestalozzi, you know, Pestalozzi Street. And yeah. Stuff. Well, this guy taught a particular way of teaching children how to do this stuff, and, that, and one of their favorite school names was the Asylum. Oh, my word. <laughs> Where did you go to school, Marianne? <laughs> the Asylum. <laughs> <laughs> She's a Perry rat. <laughs> well, little Augustus Caesar Dodge, actually, he fell in love with Clara Hurdick, Joseph Hurdick's daughter. And he was kind of a shy guy, and, and one of his friends, George Wallace Jones, who we'll talk about next, said, you know, you got to come back to St. Genevieve from Washington, and you got to woo her. And he came back and professed his love, and, and, and the quote was, I can't marry you, I'm engaged to my cousin. <laughs> well, it really wasn't first cousin, it was probably second, but <laughs> they yeah, eventually but that did. still wasn't allowed. Then it, no, was, it was. Oh third. yeah, well anybody yeah, ever was. Was. Yeah. Yeah. They could do. They could marry they, whoever they, they wanted. Really wanted to. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it really was second cousins were allowed until yeah. they figured out that it caused mental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he ends up moving to Galena, Illinois, to manage lead mines. There was a lot of St. Genevieveans that went up to Galena and Sinaway, and. Um, Ended up moving to Burlington, was a representative again when Iowa was a territory. And he served in the uh, Senate from 1848 to 1855. He and his father are the only father-son that have ever served in the U.S. Senate at the same time. Oh and they were both from St. Genevieve. Mm. So, oh my gosh. Um, after he got out of the Senate, he was a minister to Spain, then mayor of Burlington. Uh, and he died in Burlington and was buried up there in 1883. Now his other buddy, George Wallace Jones, who was the other first senator from Iowa, was born in Indiana. Uh, he was the son of a guy named John Rice Jones, who was from Kaskaskia and eventually came over here. And the Joneses, uh, one of the Jones girls married up John Scott, and they're all kind of related in here. Um, he studied law. He was uh, a drummer in the War of 1812. He studied at a university near Louisville called Transylvania University. I think it's still there. Transylvania, <laughs> that's where the that's where the bank was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but his one of his fellow students was a guy named Jefferson Davis, the future president of the Confederacy. Well, he ended up going up north and mining lead too, and got in uh, being a delegate at the, from Michigan Territory. And he was a senator from U.S. senator from Iowa from 1848 to 1859. Uh, then he became a minister to Panama and Colombia, so he kind of got along uh, pretty well. Two of his sons joined the Confederacy during the Civil War, and actually he was arrested and thrown in jail because he wrote a letter to Jefferson Davis, and uh, that was actually I think he was in jail for a month, and then President Lincoln pardoned him. So. Mm -hmm. Tensions during the Civil War here were pretty pretty tight. Another little fact about uh, when they were all in the Senate, uh, Jefferson Davis had come to Washington and they went to a party and on the Lynn and George Wallace Jones left early and went back to their boarding house where everybody was staying and later Jefferson Davis stumbled in. He had fallen off a bridge and cut himself and actually those two helped save Jefferson Davis's life so people from St. Genevieve helped future president of the Confederacy. 
Okay. Kind of amazing. <laughs> Let me see who we got next. Um, oh, the next guy is a guy named Henry Breckenridge. And Henry Breckenridge, every student in St. Denis should learn about Henry Breckenridge. He was a young boy from Pittsburgh. He was sent here in 1793 to learn French. Oh, I remember him. And he would do two words of French when he got here, we oui and no. <laughs> yes and no. And when he left, he had forgotten how to speak English. But lucky for us, he wrote a book about coming to St. Genevieve, the house he lived in, which was the Vital St. Jean Beauvais house down next to the Show Me Shop, which is still here. And in, that, in a book that he wrote, he described the, the Beauvais, he described the house, the furniture, the, some of the food. And it's one of our great references for knowing what it was like. What's the name of that book? It's called Recollections of Persons and Places in the West, and it's on Google Books. You can look it up for free. And he comes back to St. Genevieve in 1811. There's some funny stories about that, too. Um, well, I guess I did forget one guy, didn't I? Boji. Boji, or whatever is Bogey? Yeah, Boji. Uh, well, uh, Brackenridge studied law. Uh, he practiced. Uh, in uh, Somerset, Pennsylvania, because that's where he was originally educated. And then he became a, a member of the Maryland re uh, legislature. Then he was a secretary of a mission to South America, a judge in Western Florida. And he served in Congress from 1840 to 1841. Um, Only one year? Yeah, he wasn't reelected after that. It was, he <laughs> filled a partial term. Oh, OK. But when he got to Somerset, Pennsylvania after he was educated. I found a quote from him. It was, uh, he found another lawyer there, so now there's two lawyers. And he says, for two lawyers in a place are in some measure necessary, if not for the breed of lawyers, at least for the breed of lawsuits. <laughs> so you kind of have two lawyers to, to get it going. Um, he also said, marriage produces a wonderful change in a young lawyer. It makes him a man of business par four and settles him down to the level of society in which he moves. So he really kind of encouraged that. Now the next guy is Louis Vital Boji, who I'm pretty partial to because his dad lived in on the lot where my house is. And Louis was another one of those guys that went to the asylum. He worked in the store where the, the, the state has their offices, the Benjamin Shaw House. Um, and he served in the Missouri House of Rep Representatives a couple of times. And in 1867 and 1868, the president nominated him to be the, the um, commissioner of Indian affairs. So he's out in the West settling uh, uh, treaties with some of the, the Native Americans. And uh, I found uh, an article in the Junction City, Kansas paper about March 16th, 1867. The, the Senate never confirmed him, and this might have been one of the reasons. And I'm quoting here. This fellow Boji is one of the meanest, one of the most skulking and cowardly rebels of all wretches of the class who ever cursed Missouri with the evil of their wicked lives. And outside of this, he is a dishonest, notoriously incompetent, and wholly unworthy of the place. Kick the fellow out at once and get and gave done with such rebel carrion. You could write a lot better back then than we can now. But it, Louis Boji was also one of the uh, founders of the, the Iron Mountain St. Louis Railroad, which really kind of caused the demise of our plank road that went from here to Iron Mountain. Um, and he was a senator for four years until he died and while he was in office, too. His mother and father are buried in the cemetery, and his mother's tombstone has the most errors on it of any tombstone in the cemetery. I think there's like seven errors. And here's the mother of a U.S. senator. <laughs> uh, the last uh, two, uh, one was Edward Hempstead. He didn't spend a lot of time here. He was born in Connecticut, uh, first attorney general of the territory. Uh, in 1809 to 1811, we were the territory of Louisiana then. He was, as I mentioned earlier, the first delegate to Congress as we were the territory of Missouri. He founded the uh, St. Louis Board of Education. Uh, and his connection to St. Genevieve was he had a brother. Charles Hempstead, who practiced law here. And he married a St. Genevieve girl, the uh, daughter of Louis de Brille, so he had relatives here. And he ended up dying when his horse threw him uh, in 1817 on the family, and he's buried on the family farm, which is now Bell Fountain Cemetery in St. Louis. So he's actually the oldest person 
buried in the oh, cemetery. Right. Huh. But in 1815, he wrote a letter to his brother who was here in, in St. Genevieve, and it was advice to a, I call it advice to a young lawyer. Continue your resolution never to gamble. Fall not into the habit of drinking. Be free and sociable with others of your age, but circumspect with those older. Um, let declarations and pleadings be taken from established precedents. Encourage no one to take on suits when they are wrong or cannot win. And the most important, always set your price in the beginning so there is no misunderstanding. If they cannot pay, take a note. <laughs> 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 and the last one is is the only more recent one. We've kind of lost our ability to, to be on the national scene here in St. Genevieve, but uh, Kit Bond, Christopher Kit Bond, who was the, the senator before Roy Blunt, um, and he was a Missouri governor 1981 to 1985. Uh, he is descended from Joseph Bogey, uh, Vital St. Jim Beauvais, and Francois Valley Sr. So he's got a lot of St. Genevieve mm -hmm. roots, and, and he's been here several times. And he has a lot of Perry County. He has a lot because he has the bonds yes. that are from Perry County, and I think probably related to Shadrach Bond, who was the first lieutenant governor of and Illinois. And he's, uh, he's relatives, distant, distant relatives of them. <laughs> yours. Yeah, so that's a, we did have people on the national scene, and, and St. Genevieve, in the very early days, was quite well known. Uh, it was wild. Not as wild as across the river. The French didn't think much of the English, as they called them. They called them vagab vagabonds Bag and thieves, <laughs> and fight. they had fights all the time. But then, when we became American in 1804 with the Louisiana Purchase, uh, John Baptiste Valley says, we are now all Americans. He knew how to play the politics. <laughs> Back then already. Yeah. And we, we don't have an asylum anymore. No. no. <laughs> uh, that is really neat. That's interesting. Yeah. That's when you look now, back, is he yeah. always makes it interesting. Yes, he does. That Boji, is he related to the Johnsons who lived next door then? The Johnnies. Uh -huh. yeah. Is that how you say that, yeah. Johnny? Yeah. Uh, in fact, Mrs. Johnny was the one that actually tore the house down and had my house built in 1873. Oh, okay. And that house is older than yours than the one on the corner? On the corner, yeah. 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 Not the brick, but the one that's a caddy corner there, the Shaw house. Is oh, okay. Where they, the Johnnies live. Oh, okay. Now, which one? Is that the one behind? No, it's the no. white, it's the Mammy Shaw house. house. Mammy Shaw house. Oh, okay. okay. It's called Merchant Street because there were four merchant shops there on the corner. Bogies were... Um, oh, is that why they named it Billy Bader lived. Yeah. Okay, and, and um, what was her name? Agnes Moore. And then on the other corner is uh, Menard and Valley, mm -hmm. Felix Valley House. And then you had Bish and Roberts, which is where Bill Talapic has his building. And on the other corner was uh, John Baptiste Bossier's store. So oh. oh, and then he later did the old Rozier building then? The, isn't that the same name as had the... The old Rozier building. Where the kids have their band and where St. Mrs. Paul is? Bovary building. Bovary. And oh, okay. Yeah. That isn't the word you said then? No, I okay. said Bossier. Oh, Bossier. I'm no good with friends. <laughs> <laughs> she knows a little French, but she forgot it. <laughs> no, I never could learn it. <laughs> oh. Very interesting. This is just a wonderful little, place. I mean, the little, history of it. Is. Yeah, it is. A lot of history here. A lot. So we had a history lesson. We we're shopping with the cops, and we're going to have a party up at the park for Christmas. Called Fair so Christmas. See, Fair Christmas. So. Think of all the exciting things that's going on again. There's something going on. I just love to play with these musical instruments. Only I never can make them work. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> well, you saw the little thing she had at Easter, but they did Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the 
like it, it's so fast. <laughs> she put a new battery in. <laughs> Marianne's hat went right with it. Yeah, it looked enough. I love that. He took it. So he turned us on in the middle of the night and get rocked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All you gotta do is pull his neck, that's what Jim <laughs> Jack says. Just pull his neck. Come grandma and pull his neck. <laughs> that's the way grandma, my grandma used to kill chickens. Chicken. Yeah, oh, yes. yes. Oh, I remember that. Ring the neck. And we were kids, oh. and then they'd lay them down and shove them off. If they didn't mm. twist the heads off, what they were doing. Yeah. yeah. Like and then they'd hop around them. for a, oh. <laughs> and those chicken and dumplings were so good. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. They were. They were very My mother-in-law did that night. I was never around anything like that. She said, they'd take the chicken and boil them in the hot water. What? I said, well, I could, oh, I had a hard time doing that, but when she chopped that head off, I honestly, I could still see that. That was something with me the rest of my life. But. Oh, and dip them in hot water, and then I'm sorry, I don't know if that's all. Oh, and I just eat it. Oh, it's so good. Plastic package with cellophane. And they shoot them with all those things that don't. Me and my gun. He needs Marianne's hat on that. Yeah, put it on Marianne's hat, Don. Yes, thank you. Show everybody what our favorite star is wearing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, thank you all for being on tonight and uh, making our Thanksgiving weekend fun. So, and what do we have next in two weeks? <laughs> well, hopefully we'll have the... <laughs> what, what do you want on <laughs> it? Hopefully we'll have our turkey's dinner. <laughs> okay, maybe we can have some music since it's we'll going to be yeah. the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. People are cooking and getting ready for it. And maybe we can have some of our uh, talented musicians from town maybe come probably. in and do some We really don't stuff. have anybody on the agenda nope. right now. So, And then we got Christmas walk coming up and all kinds of... Christmas things one week, one week, one week. Mm -hmm. It's Christmas. It's so the Christmas walk will have to be talked about. Yes. Next time. And if we don't have a next time, we'll make sure you come anyway. <laughs> or you can stop in and just tell us about it, man. Yeah. I think Felix Valley's also having their re Le Rivion right reenactment on that Sunday. Also, mm. is it that? Yeah, there's a lot of them that week. Oh, week. oh there's there's a a lot. No, I think the last couple of years, last year and this yeah. year they're doing it they're on doing Sunday. It. They do a lot on uh, okay. that that weekend. I think they want to keep it filled up. So actually, the 29th, they have what is it? Shop Small Town or something? The cookie the cookie crumble. crumble. Oh, okay. the cookie crumble. Okay. Trail. Yeah. Cookie. Okay. Yeah. Cookie crumble. The following so. week will be the Christmas walk. The mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's not uh, far. Yeah. And then, and then, then we'll be the, <laughs> right. Yeah. Then it'll be Christmas for you. Yeah. We'll have uh, yeah. Santa Bash. Cookie uh, cookie sales for Women's Club out at uh, Country Mart on the 13th. I think it's the 13th. Is it? Yeah, I think. I think it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm in charge. Busy time. You're in charge. You should know. Yeah, because because Christmas party is the fifteenth. Yeah. So. So if that's everybody wrong, come join everything that's going on. So let's have the turkey do the dance again, and then we'll leave. And thank you all for watching. He's coming to you, Martha. <laughs> Grab him by the neck and squeeze him. <laughs> I remember doing that dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that dance. Uh, <laughs> not too long ago. That was fun. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, good night, everyone. Have a, have have a, a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. If we don't see Thanksgiving, have a nice Thanksgiving. <laughs> Happy oh. Thanksgiving. Very good. <laughs> and if it's your anniversary, have a good anniversary. <laughs> 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 oh, I
<laughs> Actually, it is my oh, mom and daddy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Well, thanks everybody for listening to us. And I hope you enjoyed it. And it was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You guys want to pull the turkey snack? Are you, uh, hey, Jeff, are you, you going to need some volunteers out there at the. At the uh, <laughs> Uh, 